Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Ticket, and today's video, what I have right here is an iPhone XR, and right over here I have an iPhone 11. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the brand new features of iOS 14 running on these smartphones. Now, it's practically the same on both phones, so I'm going to take this and put it aside and do the demonstration on this guy. As you can see, we now have the home screen widgets with customizable redesigned home screen. So as you can see, we have iOS 14.0, so I'm gonna put that to the side. And again, if I go over here into the settings, and if I were to go into general and software update, you'll see again that this is also running iOS 14.0. So let's dive in and explore and see what's happening. So normally when you go over here, you have a bunch of side screen widgets. They're still here, but they're all redesigned with a more modernized look. And if I go down, you'll see more and more and more. So basically you can take these guys and actually put them right here. So let's talk about those. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna just press anywhere on the screen. I can uh, press and hold and it's gonna start the wiggle process. And then you see a bunch of new things. This one is one of them. If you tap this, you can see all your home screens. And the great news is you can disable a home screen that you don't want. So when I click done now, I only have two home screens that are gonna be visible to the eye when I click done again, all right? There we go, that's the only two screens. And then let's just try to add a widget to the screen, see what happens. So if I press and hold, and if I tap on plus here, I get access to my widgets menu. I can also search them uh, if I wanna search for a particular widget. Now right now, we have all these widgets available uh, for many stock applications but as developers upgrade their applications, you'll get more and more widgets. That's not a problem. So let's go over here. Let's look for the reminders widget right here. Now, when I tap on a particular one, I can swipe over and go through the different sizes, okay? So you have multiple sizes. So let's say I like this one. What I can do is I can tap on add, or I can just press and hold, and then drag and drop it somewhere. Now, as I drag and drop it onto the screen, uh, the applications automatically move away to the next home screen to make space for this particular widget. So that's nice and easy to use. Now, if I don't want a widget, I can press and hold it, okay? And I can remove it from the screen. Tap on remove, it's gone. Now, we also have something known as the stacked widgets. So again, if I press and hold, and if I go into plus, if I scroll down, we have a smart stack. So I already grabbed this smart stack and I popped it on the screen. That's a smart stack widget right here that allows me to browse through all kinds of widgets. That's not bad at all, okay? So I don't have to have all the various widgets on the screen. I can just have one little stack and I can browse through them for a quick glance. And all these widgets are gonna be data rich. So you get a lot of information at a glance. So that's that. Let's swipe over and talk about another new feature uh, at the end of your final home screen, if you swipe over, it takes you into the app library. On the app library, we have three sections, four sections. We have the search application, then we have the suggestions that auto-populates based on what the phone thinks you're using a lot, and I can launch any application directly by tapping it. This is a folder, and I can tap on any application. It's gonna launch the application directly in that folder of four. And over here, we have the recently added applications. And over here, we have automatically arranged applications. So the folder gets created. It is renamed automatically to utilities. And inside it, what iPhone does is it dumps all the utility-based applications. Now, this one here is a folder within a folder. The big ones can be tapped, and it's going to launch the application. The folder within a folder, if you tap it, it's going to launch a subfolder that has even more utilities but the phone intelligently knows uh, that these apps should be on the outside because you use them more often than the ones inside here. So I go to settings a lot, that means the settings are gonna show up right here. And of course we have all these separate categories, productivity, entertainment, reference and reading. If I tap on this one here, I have all the reference and reading related uh, apps, again, automatically and intelligently categorized in the app library section. So those are, that's a new redesigned home screen with, with, with more customization and widgets, which is absolutely fantastic. I think iOS 
uh, users are gonna lo love this. Now, one more very important feature, a brand new feature is the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, feature. So let me launch an application here to demonstrate. So let's go to Netflix, let's just play a video here. I'm playing this video right here. Now, when I exit, I can continue to watch that video anywhere on the screen as I work on my phone. I can even go to any website, I can read and watch at the same time, read and notes and whatever. I can resize this as well, put it in the top or the bottom, or if I have to do something big, I can put it to the side for a second, perform what I want to do, maybe read something important, and then when I'm done with that, bring it right back. Or I can just keep watching it as I read, if you can multitask that way, okay? It's all up to you, you can pause it here, I can exit out, I can go back to full screen. This is a good feature, all right? This was available on the iPads, now it's on the iPhone with iOS 14. The next thing that we have that is brand new is the messages application. So basically when I launch the application, what I can do now is I can actually pin messages to the top. So I have a bunch of examples here. If I press and hold it, I can say pin Etsio to the top and it's gonna appear as a circular icon on the top. And if there's a photo that's gonna show up as well, this is gonna make me, it's easier uh, to keep track of important conversations. You can do multiple conversations, no problem, as you can see. You can also unpin them if you so desire by tapping unpin. Now, when you're in an application, if you go into your uh, memojis or emojis, you have some new variations of each emoji. So if I pick an emoji, at the bottom you get all these preset variations. So we have this uh, fist emoji that is brand new, as you can see that you can use to send over to your friends. You can do it with all these various different emojis uh, as you can see right here, okay? Whatever you pick, you get that fist icon now somewhere in here. So that's that, let's move on. Now we also have a very new capable translate application, so let's launch that real quick. Uh, let's just uh, go to my finder, look for translate, I tap on it, pops right up. Now when I go to continue, uh, let's just say not now. So let's say I want to enter something and I want to translate to another language. First and foremost, you pick your source language. In this case, it's going to be English. And let's say that you are out there in Spain and you want to talk Spanish, but you don't know how to. So you pick your target language to be Spanish, okay? And then all you do is either type here, hi, how are you? Okay, and then click on go. It's going to translate that to Spanish right here, as you can see. Or what you can do is you can tap on this one. I'm looking for some directions. Can you help me? And it's going to automatically convert that to Spanish. And also you can tap on the play button Estoy here. And the ayudarme? iPhone will speak that in Spanish so you can actually talk to the person directly like that. And then the person can use it too so they can reverse translate the language to you so you can get some answers in a foreign country or even some with some locals in the area. So that's the Translate application. It's gonna be very useful. I like the fact that you can pick a uh, source language and then do a target language, very easy to pick. You have a lot of options. They'll be adding more and more as uh, the application develops further. So click Done, let's move on. Now we also have some new features with the Maps application. So if I launch the Maps application, it's hard to demonstrate but these are the new features. So you have the look around feature. You can explore certain cities like New York, Los Angeles in a fully 3D uh, environment, okay? So it's gonna look amazing. You can go to your favorites and collections from here. You can actually create those. And Siri is able to make suggestions based on the app usage. So if I was in New York right now, I could tap on look around here and you get a really nice uh, refined way to look around and just move around in the actual uh, city, okay? So you can act like you're virtually there as you're in New York. So that's just fantastic, okay? Again, this is a feature that's been more refined, looks better, look at that. You can actually feel like you're in the city. So that's one of the new things with the Maps application as well. Now, when you go into Safari, we have some new stuff. So I'm at google.com here. What I can do is I can tap over here, and now what I get is I get a special tracking report for any website that I'm visiting, and Safari will tell you how that website is actually tracking you guys. It also monitors your password securely so it's not involved in a breach and stuff like that. But again, that's the tracking report built into Safari 
that you might, some people that are concerned about their privacy are gonna love this stuff, okay? So that's another thing that's new. We also have a new feature where when somebody calls you, uh, the incoming call doesn't fill the entire screen. Let me show you a quick example. Now let's say you, that you're inside an application and somebody actually calls you. Let me call myself from another phone. And I want you guys to take a look at what happens on the screen. You're in the app, you're studying something, somebody gives you a call, and now what's gonna happen is, instead of the whole phone, uh, the whole thing taking the whole phone, the phone application, it's on the top, I can actually swipe it away or take the call from here. So that's brand new, let me call myself one more time here. All right, so let me kill the volume. And again, I can swipe it away or I can take the call from here. Or I can swipe it down, it's gonna expand. So that's just fantastic new little uh, features. Now obviously the biggest features are the widgets and the home screen redesign. So let's, uh, for anybody that's wondering, let's go in here and look at a couple more widgets just to see what they look like. So again, if you pick a given widget right here, you get a bunch of different options, okay? You can have different sizes, as you can see. So if I were to grab this one again, I can just put it right here, okay? Let's do one more tap on plus. Uh, let's go down here, let's go for the music. Again, I get all these various options. So I grab this guy, press and hold, or let's just tap on add, so I can just add it to the screen automatically configures everything, but you can move things around if you so desire, okay? Look at that, you have all these different ways uh, to do it. And again, press on this, tap on that, tap on this, hide or unhide your home screen uh, screens, okay, and click done. All right, so that's iOS 14 running on the iPhone XR and the iPhone 11. It works great, but remember it's a beta, so there's gonna be some crashes, some bugs, uh, the public beta is going to be available in a couple of weeks. And of course, the full release is going to come down and fall. So either you get to wait or you can go and install it. I have a video on how to install it officially. And I'm sure there's going to be ways to do it unofficially as well very soon. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day. See you in the next video. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.